Hello everyone and welcome to the Christmas special of the Cherry Heart podcast. Um, it's episode 40, which is a good number to end the year on I think. And um, my name's Sandra from the blog Cherry Heart um, and we're coming to you from chilly, frosty Bedfordshire in the United Kingdom. Um, so because this is a Christmas special, um, I've come down to sit in the living room uh, so you can see the Christmas tree and we'll have some twinkly fairy lights and candles burning and I've got my little helper with me. <laughs> my poor little helper. It doesn't really fit in screen very well, which is a bit of a shame. I don't suppose he'll uh, hang around for long, but are you not going to stay even? Are you going? Oh, he's going already. My little helper is going already. Oh, stay and be cute for a little while. No, nope. it wants out. <laughs> hey, look, I've got a treat. Look, I've got a treat for Santa's helper. Oh, yes, he wants that though, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes. <laughs> yes, my elf is quite unimpressed with proceedings, I'm afraid, so he may have to go. His costume doesn't fit him particularly well. His little feet don't always stay out. Slight problem when you try to get around, isn't it? But a slight problem, yeah. Um, yeah, so where were we in proceedings? In the podcasting proceedings? Let me put him down. There you go, little helper. Go on then. <laughs> I haven't got any more. No, you've had them all. Um, yeah, so the show notes for this podcast will be on my blog so that's cherryheart.co.uk and you can find links for and pictures more pictures and things for everything i talk about there so i generally put links to um my ravelry project pages in there for you so that you can find patterns and the yarn i've used in case i forget to mention it or can't remember the names of anything so that's always a good place to look and I am Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram and Cherry Heart elsewhere on the web. And also just I've included, I've been collecting up some little bits of footage, some clips of footage. So I, you know, I'm really enjoying the whole vlogmas thing. And as much as I, I really kind of want to get involved and do that, I just, I really can't see myself <laughs> being disciplined enough to get a video podcast up every day. It seems a bit, uh, yeah, I feel like it'd be too much for me, to be honest. But I do quite like the idea of it and getting involved in it. So I have been sort of collecting up a few clips. So if you're interested in that, I'll pop that right at the end so that you can kind of stop. Before that, if you're not interested or if you're just, you know, if you just like that bit of a kind of behind the scenes, a bit more family stuff, a bit of Christmassy stuff, then I'll shove that in at the end. So if you want to, you can stay tuned for that. So something I was going to talk about um, on this episode, just quickly, um, is my Better Out Than Stash. Now, if you were here at the beginning of the year, you might remember that I ran a little Better Out Than Stash along, which was about not buying yarn for a while and using your stash instead. And um, because I have this sort of problem where I'm buying an awful lot of stuff and I'm perhaps not using it or getting through it as quick as I would like. And I'd sort of got to the stage, well, last year I bought more yarn than I used in the entire year. In fact, I bought considerably more yarn than I used in the entire year, which was a bit of a worry. And I thought if I carry on like that, buying more and more than I use, then we're going to be no space for people in the house, it will just all be full of yarn. And while that doesn't seem like a problem to everyone, <laughs> I thought it probably wasn't really a very sensible way to go on. So I came up with this idea of sort of not buying yarn for until I went to Edinburgh um, earlier this year and sort of trying to keep track a bit more of how much I used and not sort of buying sort of ridiculous amounts more than I might actually be able to get through at some point. So that's kind of the goal. So I've been doing that this whole year. So I just thought I would quickly tell you, now I've kind of got everything counted up and tallied, how I did with that. So the number of yards that I brought into this house this year, yards of yarn, is 
this sounds really bad, but 35,677 yards. So that is what I bought. Well, to be fair, that's what came into the house. That isn't everything I brought because some stuff was commissions or gifts or samples and such like. So just putting that out there. It wasn't all it wasn't all purchased by me, but obviously a considerable amount of it was. But anyway, so thirty-five thousand six hundred and seventy-seven in. And then yards that went out this year that I've used up is 37,108. So I used up more yarn than I brought in this year. So more yarn has gone out of my stash than has come into my stash. Yay! I'm so pleased with that. I'm so pleased with that. And I really hope I can kind of keep that up. I really want to do that for next year now. So that's my goal for 2018 is to do the stash. If I'm you know buying more <laughs> if I'm using up more then there's a chance that my stash might not be quite so ridiculously huge at some point which you know I, I do like to have a stash don't get me wrong but I just you know <laughs> a more reasonable proportion of what goes in and what goes out seems like a admirable goal to me right now so yeah so I'm pleased with that this year and I think I'm finding that quite a motivating idea for next year. I'll shut up about it now because it's probably not that interesting to you, but it's interesting to me. I like it. I just like the idea that I'm not buying stuff and it's going to sit there in stash and never, ever, ever be got to. If I keep to sort of this idea of kind of using, at least if I'm using the same amount that I'm buying, so I'm sort of treading water in stash terms. That would be quite a nice place. I've got a nice little sort of collection that I'll keep adding to and keep taking from. But yeah, that's kind of probably just motivating to me. I don't know if it's of any sort of appeal to anyone else. I know some people just totally don't get it at all and just want to not think about it and enjoy it. And, and that is great. But for me, sort of, I kind of get some enjoyment of knowing that I'm not going, you know, not going too mad, I suppose. Although you've heard the numbers, it's quite mad. <laughs> anyway, that was a little aside, really, but just a kind of end of year, little review of that kind of goal. But, um, yeah, as I say, motivating to me, and I kind of think I want to do it next year. A few people have sort of said about doing a better house than stash next year as well, just as a kind of a way to review what you've got, see if there's anything you want to clear out and kind of, just put the brakes on the yarn buying for a bit because some people do like to do that help save money if nothing else <laughs> but yeah so maybe we'll think about that if you're still interested in doing that perhaps leave a little comment below and we'll sort of see or um whether that's worth putting out there i'll probably do it for me but i don't know if any of you want to join me or not but we'll see we'll see how the interest is and if there is or isn't interest for that um, but yeah, let's crack on with the rest of the project, shall we? So the first thing I have to show you, I don't actually have to show you. Um, it's a Christmas present that I made um, for my nan, which we can talk about here because there's no way she'll be watching this. But um, yeah, I made it and I got some pictures of it and then I wrapped it up. I held off wrapping it because I thought, oh no, I've got to, you know, get some pictures to share. And then I wrapped it up, forgetting that I hadn't shown it to you here. So I'll pop some pictures in to show you. But um, she wanted a nighty or pyjama case um, to pop on her bed. And uh, yeah, so I sewed one of those up for her. Um, kind of using her favourite colours, sort of dusk, dusk, dusky pinks and purples and things. So yeah, so I made that for her last week. So that was an object that I finished and it was so nice to be sewing again as well. So that was so that was a nice thing to do. Um so I made that and then I think we'll probably move on to socks. I've got quite a few socks. I've got two sock finishes to show you. So first of all 
I have finished my Strictly socks. Yay! So um, Ali from Who Is Starry Eyes Ali on Instagram and hosts the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. Um, she hosted a Strictly Sock Along um, where you made your socks while you were watching Strictly or... Who are you? What are you doing? Get your bum out of the present zone. Mm. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so you made uh, socks while uh, the Strictly was on, or Dancing with the Stars, or whatever it's called where you are in the world. And um, I have finished mine. <laughs> are you grumbling down there, little helper? I've got a second little helper joining me now, so I don't know if he'll make an appearance. We shall see. But let's show you these socks in the meantime. So this yarn is a homespun house yarn and it's called B-Sides and Rarities and it's rather gorgeous as you can see and the pattern is uh, just made up basically. I was going to make a tree pattern which I can never remember what it's called. I think it's called Evergreen Socks maybe. Um, yes, which I was going to make, but then it it had like a little lacy chart and I, I just, while I was watching, I couldn't really cope with focusing on that as well. So I just went for a sort of simple zigzaggy pattern, which um, a couple of people have sort of asked me about. So I might just pop the pattern up for that as well, if I get five minutes to write that up as well. Um, but yeah, I sort of did it in a uh, twisted one by one rib, this sort of zigzaggy pattern. Um, partridge eye heel. I forgot to do my slip stitches on the heel again, which is annoying. I must start doing those again. And just a basic wedge, rounded wedge toe with Kitchener at the bottom. Yeah, I like how those have come out. So I keep, I kept forgetting that I sort of had these on the go, so it's almost like a little extra bonus finished item now they're done. So yeah, quite pleased with those. And I've got them on my lovely new bunny sock blockers. And I've kept his little bow on. Because it's Liberty Fabric and it's cute. <laughs> so that's those ones. And then I've also finished, I think I showed you these as a whip last time. And that's my Yule Ball socks. Um, so the yarn is Yule Ball and it's by London House Yarns. It's a self striping sock as you see and it came with this um, little coordinating mini. I think you can choose, you could choose whether to have red or black. So I decided on the black. And each of the stripe colours is for one of the characters that went to the Yule Ball. So you've got, see if I can remember. We've got McGonagall is the green, Dumbledore is the grey, Victor Crumb is the red, mine is the pink. Green was Ginny, Minty was Ginny. Oh, Hagrid was brown. Oh, hang on a minute, because Harry is black, and I thought there was Ron and Parvati, but we've only got one colour in there. Perhaps just Ron was orange I'm sure what what do you want what are you whittling for little helper is being noisy do you want to come up again is that what you want yeah you want to be my helper again come on then or is it because you've got your paw stuck in your costume it's not very good is it this costume really it was cheap as chips but still there you come in to be my helper again are you you put your little elf hood up. <laughs> oh dear. Poor little critter, aren't you? Hey, The things you have to go through, eh? Oh, the sufferings of a poor little pet. <laughs> oh, so cute, though, Bert. So yes, um, what can I tell you about these? Two by two cuff on these ones. And just vanilla socks. 
that fish lips kids heal in these ones because they're self-striping and that works rather well with those and what sort of toe did I do? Oh mine sort of rounded cinched up toe where I do the the creases and just round to a you know point and cinch the stitches together. Yeah so two finished socks this time to show you which brings my grand total for this year to 14! 14, 14 pairs of socks I've made this year which is one more than last year which is quite exciting and I've also got my Christmas Eve cast on to go so I might even make 15 pairs of socks this year that would be... Oh, that's amazing um, and two pairs in there were, are for Darling Daughter so you've got crusty on. yeah um, sorry I'm distracted by little helper <laughs> who's demanding strokes so you leave your hand and he's like yep yeah, keep that stroking me <laughs> um, yeah so two of those pairs of socks will be for my little girl one pair she's had already and the other pair is actually sitting up in the pile um, but I kind of collect them all up all the ones I make in the year I collect them all up and then sort of I guess now, now we've uh, now we're getting to Christmas and the end of the year I'll um, I'll bring them down from my little crafty box in the garden and then I can wear them and it's like a little extra Christmas present that's been saving up over the year because you kind of almost forget about the ones you made earlier on in the year and yes that'd be quite nice so there's a pair for her in there as well and I put um, in the show notes I've just popped a little link I did a sort of search for all the socks I made this year on Ravelry so if you are for any reason remotely interested about uh, which pairs I've made then yeah there is a link so you can find that out if you want to um, so that's the socks um, and the other thing I finished is this thing just here that's going to be really hard to show you and now I've got a little helper all comfy on me so it'll be even harder to show um, yes I finished my duck egg blanket um, so we've spoken about this a few times before and um, I've told you the story of where I came across the square from and um, yeah it's uh, I'll pop some pictures in that's uh, the easiest way I will get it down to show you I'll pop some pictures in in a minute so you can sort of see better. But here it is. <laughs> what do you think, Bert? As you see, it's incredibly hard to kind of fit it in and to show you. Let's pop you down a bit so you're cosy. A little bit of blanket coverage? Yeah? Check your little nose in the screen. <laughs> There's my border that I did. So the squares were nice and easy, wonderfully easy. I've written a blog post about this as well, by the way. So, um, yeah, so I guess there's no point repeating everything I've written down there because you might have uh, already read that. But um, yeah, in case you haven't. I've put a link in because I've just um, what I've put in that blog post is uh, just a little bit of you know how I came about making it and the sort of process and everything but um, people have been asking me about the pattern for these squares now I haven't actually got it written down everywhere because I remembered it from a pattern that my nan had in some old magazine and uh, you know that's long gone I don't know where that is but um we have managed to track down, I say we, I've ma I was looking on Ravelry and I've managed to track down similar patterns or very, very similar. Either they look the same or they're very similar. I think the only difference is there perhaps a few sort of things with where I start each round and the sort of number of chains in some of these gappy bits. I think probably because I was doing it from memory, mine isn't quite the same as some of the others, but yeah. Um, and then a couple of people, when I talked about it on the podcast before, were um, pointed me in the direction of uh, where they'd seen it as well. So I've collected up a few pattern links. So if you go to the show notes um, and find the link to the blog post, you'll see. You can find the pattern for the square in there. 
but I, I will write up a pattern for the whole blanket so I'll pop how I did the squares in there and then mm. I'll just sort of have all the information about the blanket and I'll pop the border pattern in as well so I will do that but obviously it won't be till next year now because we're kind of running out of time this year but um Yes, that's something I do plan to do, but if you want to just have the square pattern or you want to get started, that's you can, you know, find the links to that there. Um, yeah, so there it is. I'll pop some pictures in now so that you can kind of see the whole effect. So I uh, decided to pick out the sort of colours of the dots with this with the join, so I went for some contrasting joining colours and I popped all of the centre dot colours, I used all of those in the um, joining, so there's a mishmash of different joining colours in there, which I wasn't planning to do originally, I was just thinking it would all be duck egg blue, but for some reason that popped into my head as an idea, so I went with it. Oops. Oh dear. Blanket is disturbing the tree. And yes, yeah, so the border was the trickiest Ooh. bit. What are you whittling about now? Oh, up, down, up, down. Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to sort of echo this, the square pattern, and sort of bring that into the border up here, as you see, and then sort of add a bit of a frilly finish. You're being disruptive. What are you doing? Do you want to take your costume off? Is it making you uncomfy? It's just. Let's just extract my elf <laughs> from his costume and see if that quietens you down. Is it making you too hot? Is that what it is? There, is that better? Happier now? Is that better now? Oh, good dog. <laughs> right, let's pop that back up there. It won't be as neat as it was, but... Oh, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about that. Um, it's Starcraft Special Decay. I thought of something else I need to show you. <laughs> um, it's Starcraft Special Decay, all of it. So um, I've popped the colours on my Ravelry page as well. Uh, this main blue is the lovely duck egg blue, which is one of my favourites. So as you can imagine, I went through an awful lot of those <laughs> to do all of those squares and the border as well. I think the border took... I can't remember now, but... Best part of about three balls, I think, just to do the border, so... Maybe two and a half. But yeah, so I got through quite a lot of those, but obviously the little colours, not so much. But um, yes, anyway, I, I'll collect all that information and get it all together for you. But some of it is um, is about if you do want to know the colours and the square pattern. So the other thing that I have finished is a little something for you guys. <clears throat> um, I made couple of weeks ago these lovely mitts my soul soothing mitts um that are just quite nice well mitts are one of my favorite little things to make anyway because they're nice and sort of quick and I love wearing them and I wanted a lovely gray pair and this gorgeous yarn I used here I won't go over all the details again because I've already talked about it but um, quite a lot of you like this sort of crossed trebles stitch and were asking me for the pattern so I have produced the pattern um, and I've popped that up. I've just made a second pair just to sort of test everything out because this one I made in fingering weight. It's quite a light fingering weight though, um, held double. So I was thinking it will probably knit up, um, oh words, in double knit yarn as well because this is a this is probably around about a three ply really because it's got quite a it's quite light but it's got sort of a haze to it so it's nice and squishy and warm so I just wanted to check that it knit up okay to a double knit pattern and it does I needed to use um, a slightly bigger hook to get the same gauge so it's probably slightly more than double knit but you can make double knit work quite well and it's quite handy if you want a slightly smaller size mitt as well to save adjusting but yeah so I just wanted to check the pattern so yeah so that's um, either a light four ply held double or you could uh, use double knit to make it um, 
but the pattern is up for those. So the yarn that I used to make these ones is another homespun house one actually. This one I've had in my stash for years and years and years. I think it's one of the first ones I ever got from her. It's even, even on the old label. And uh, the colourway is called Cupcake. And it's 100% merino. This one, so it's got all these lovely little speckles on, which is really cute. And it's kind of... I can say, do the stitches look really different? Because this is much more sort of hazy. A little bit, not massively though. But, um, yeah, so the pattern... Um, I shall be popping that up after I've done this, so um, if you're watching this sort of straight away it might not be there, but it will be there very shortly. I'll get it up today, so. And you will be able to download it completely free, that's my gift to you. My little bit of uh, Christmas spirit, sharing the Christmas love and spreading it around. There's a little gift for you that you can download this completely free up until the end of Christmas Eve. So if you would like to give yourself a little present, pop along and download it. Um, yeah, and it won't be like massively expensive after that and just be, you know, not like a horrendously expensive pattern or anything, but you know, I thought as a little prezi leading up to Christmas, I'll do it as a little freebie. So yeah, so if you want to pop on there and download that for free, you can do that. Just remember to do it by the end of Christmas Eve. That's UK terms, so GMT. Yeah, I was just thinking if that's right. No, we're not in summertime now, are we? Clearly not. So yeah, GMT. Oh, they look nice on. I haven't really worn them yet. I tried them on to check as I was going, but... Ooh, I like them. Yes. So I only had a tiny bit of yarn left because I wanted to use, I made them at the same time, I started making one with one end of the yarn and then I made the other set with the other end because I really like this one and I've hoarded it for such a long time I didn't want to, <laughs> I wanted to use as much as possible so I actually popped another little repeat in of these just to use up so I only got a little bit left. But I did check that you could actually make the pattern okay as written in, with uh, 100 grams of DK. Um, yeah, so obviously the yardage for that and everything will be in the pattern. So yeah, so Merry Christmas everyone. And um, there is one more thing I can talk about actually. That's, I've sort of showed you everything I've done and I guess this is kind of pips because it was a pattern Pips's patterns in progress. It's not really in progress anymore, but, but this, so the only things that I have on the go now, which I probably won't bother to talk about this because otherwise this podcast will get too long. So I've only got my garter ahoy, garters ahoy shawl on the go, which is just a shawl made out of garter stitch that I'm doing at a very leisurely place. So I've got that on the go, and I have started another little project um, which is like a scrappy project I'm kind of obsessed with at the moment um, but I'll probably show you that to you in the new year um, which I hope you're not too cross about because I posted <laughs> I posted a picture on Instagram and there was quite a little bit of interest in that so so I will show it to you um, but yeah like I say there isn't really a lot to see at the moment anyway so hopefully I'll work on it a little bit over Christmas and I can show you in the new year and you can get a bit better idea of what I'm up to. So um, yeah I won't bother with that and we'll just go on to the last section I think. So the last little section of our um, my Christmas special is incoming goodies and this incoming goodie is a present. Yay! That's appropriate for Christmas isn't it? So, um, I got this gift, um, it was Lynn that contacted me on Ravelry and um, she said would it be okay if she sent me a little something, which was ever so kind of her. And Lynn is, let me get her details right for you, so she is Stitching Fairy. So on Etsy she's known as Stitching Fairy Crafts, that's the Etsy shop, and her blog is Happiness is Cross Stitching, that's a dot, dot blogspot.co.uk, just show you her little label there, 
I'm not sure if the writing will come up, but obviously it's all linked in show notes. As I say for everything, <laughs> so I'm no good at remembering. So yeah, so she sent me a little parcel with some lovely goodies in. And look what I got! Can you see what they are? They're cute little gorgeous cherries. How perfect is that? It's a little label there. Oh, that's cute. Look, she's got a little bee on it. <laughs> it's a lovely drawstring bag, which is my favourite. Ah, oh, I love it. And not just that, she's also popped some goodies inside. Oh, I just remembered she sent me. I'll show you. She sent me these gorgeous earrings. <gasps> I was going to wear them for today and I forgot to get them out. But let me show you them. Look at these. How cute is that? <gasps> they were adorable. I was looking for some little cherry earrings and I found some little ones, but they're a bit... They weren't great, but these are perfect. I love that. So she's popped those in for me and some little labels that she's put in, some handmade labels. And she's put in a little matching pouch to go with the project bag, a little notions pouch. Look at that cute suit. So that's really adorable as well. And also a matching pin cushion to go with it as well. So we've got a whole little set. Oh, they look so good together, don't they? How cute is that? And also, some like little festive baubly stitch markers. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> they are so perfect. Christmas Eve cast on. That's what they will be used for. Are you coming up again? Up and down like a yo-yo today, you. Sorry, my little helper elf wants to be back. There you go. Happy? So she very kindly got that package together for me, which was so, so kind. But just, you know, so many things in there, so generous. So thank you ever so much, Batlin. That's really nice. And perfectly themed, of course. I love it. But she also sent me something for you guys. So next time we do a little giveaway or we do a crochet along, I have a lovely little gift for you. Got someone being snuffly down here. So I'll try not to wink it too much. As you can see, it's a gorgeous little notion pouch, but I can feel there's something else in there. There's some more little things in there. So yeah, so that will make a perfect little gift for the next giveaway we do. Um, I don't think I'll do one this side of Christmas because it's getting a bit late for that, isn't it? And by the time you've sort of answered it and I've drawn it, and it will never get to you in time. So I think it'll probably be easier if I do that in the new year. So if we do the Better Out Than Stash, if you're interested in doing that, maybe that could be one of the prizes for that. Um, but if we don't do that, I'm sure there'll be something else. Or I could just have a giveaway for the sake of it. That's always an option, isn't it? Yeah, so that's something to look forward to. And um, I think that's it from me, really. Is that it from us, little helper? Little helper without his costume on anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, I think that's it for me. So I won't see you until probably 2018 now until we next uh, chatter again. So yeah, I hope you have a very, very lovely time off and a wonderful holiday and a break and enjoy yourselves whatever you do. And if you celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a really very merry one and a lovely new year as well. And um, yeah, just enjoy yourselves. And I hope you get some lovely relaxing crafty time too. And I'll see you next year. Bye. This has gone off the rails now, you keep interrupting me. Yes, you do.